Hi everyone, this is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish. I hope you're well. I just wanted to share with you a last minute idea I had for Christmas. And uh, these are my prototypes. I decided to sit down and make some prototypes to see if my idea would work. I wanted to create some beautifully decorated and welcoming front door scenes. So uh, a festive facade, I've called them. And this is what I've come up with. And uh, as I said, these are a work in progress. They're not perfect. Uh, and there's definitely some things I do differently next time. But I think my prototypes prove the concept. So I'm going to show you what I did and you can tell me what you think. I used a, a number of silicon molds to make these soaps, a, a basic rectangular one, as well as this beautiful front door facade mold here, uh, and also a number of uh, Christmas themed molds. So these ones are for fondant, but you can also use them for soap. Uh, and they just have a number of different Christmas themes. So trees, bells, wreaths, Santas, you know, snow, and so on and so forth. There's plenty of these molds to be found online and I've also put links to the molds that I used in the description of this video. So check that out too. The first thing I'm going to do is pour myself some base bars on which the embeds are going to rest. I'm doing three 40 gram bars and I'm just uh, weighing them out on these kitchen scales to make sure that they're accurate so they'll all be identical. I've scented my melt and pour soap base with a Christmas mint essential oil blend and I'm spraying with alcohol to remove any surface bubbles. While my base bars are setting, I'm gonna work on my embeds. Uh, as you can see, I've already made some here. I made uh, some dark green ones. So this is a green uh, soap coloring mixed with black to get a really, really rich dark green color. I find it works good as a base color. What I did is I actually did about uh, 30 grams of soap and I tinted it to the color I wanted and then I poured it into just an empty mold and I can cut up a little bit at a time, uh, melt it in small amounts and use it to do my embeds because you really only need a teeny tiny bit of soap for that. So I also have some white melt and pour soap base here, uh, approximately 50 grams. I'm gonna use it to pour uh, a front door mold and also a, a couple more embeds that I'd like to be white. Got my isopropyl alcohol on hand and what I'm doing is I'm doing the fine sort of sections of the doors first and spraying with alcohol. These are the areas where you can get bubbles and if you get bubbles then it sort of ruins uh, the shape of the embed. So I'm just pouring slowly and carefully, spraying with alcohol as I go. And um, it's probably about 35 to 40 grams to fill that up. Now I'm gonna pour myself some white Christmas trees. Again, just spraying with alcohol as I go. It helps the uh, soap to move into all those crevices without leaving air bubbles. I'm doing a little snowman. I'm not gonna bother with the arms. They're not gonna stay on anyway, they'll fall off. So I'm just doing the main body and a Christmas wreath and a candy cane. Um, in my other mold, I'll also do this little Christmas gift here. That's a really cute little mold that will come in handy. Another candy cane that I'll just fill up and also, oh yes, the bells. Don't forget the bells. The bells are cute too. So there we go. Okay, so a good half an hour later and these are now set. I haven't had to leave them too long just because of the size of them. They're so small and even the door is quite thin, so it's set too. And I'm just going to extract these from my mold. Uh, they come out pretty easily. Just gotta be careful not to take any of the fine details with you. Um, sometimes, you know, arms of snowmen and, and ribbons of bells and stuff can fall off, but that's okay. This is what I actually should be doing. It's, it's handy to actually remove the soap from the surface of the mold first, and then pop out your embeds already trimmed. 
So those other ones that I popped out, see how they've got the soap surrounding them? I'm going to have to trim them up later. That's going to take me extra time. I really should have just scraped them all clean before I popped them out. And then that saves you time having to trim them later. So see these Christmas trees here are perfectly trimmed. So that's what I recommend you do. It's just a handy hint there. Okay, so here is my beautiful front door. I'm actually going to try and keep it as flat as possible while I ease the mold away from it. So I can bend the mold all I want, but try and keep the door flat. And especially for this little area here, really fine details there, they can get bent if you sort of bend the mold back or bend it back too quickly. Uh, but that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next step is to alter this front door embed. It is beautiful as it is, but I want it to fit into a mold. And as you can see, it is far too big to fit this rectangular mold, which is I think eight by five and a half centimeters. Uh, so I'm gonna use a nice sharp knife with a flat blade. And I've got this cutting mat here, which has a grid on it and also a ruler for a straight edge uh, so I can measure. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off uh, this lower plinth here, uh, just because I need to shorten uh, my mold considerably. So I'm just gonna cut off bits that aren't really necessary. Uh, the next step is to cut off the arch where um, just where it ends at the top here. I'm using sort of like the two little plinths as a guide. There we go. Uh, and this arch is also too wide. So I need it to be five and a half centimeters wide and it's actually six centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slice little bits off each edge, making sure that I slice evenly off each edge so they look pretty even. Um, the next step is the columns. I wanna separate the columns here. I'm cutting on an angle, uh, just so if, if you do happen to cut crooked or cut jaggedly, if you cut on an angle, it's sort of in and behind and it's not so noticeable. So there we go, I've cut those columns off. Uh, I have the door left. I'm going to trim off that section that was surrounding the door. There was a little section in between the columns and the door. So I'm gonna trim that off. Now I need to shorten the door. So I'm gonna cut off this top section here. There we go, that was sort of embossed. And I'm also gonna cut, it's hard to see because of the color of the soap, I'm cutting out the letterbox. So there was a letterbox in the center of the door. I don't mind the letterbox, I actually like the letterbox, but I, I have to cut some stuff away somewhere. So I'm actually trimming out the letterbox and I find it's really easy to use that as a guide when you're cutting, to just cut along the top of the letterbox, and cut along the bottom of the letterbox, and then stick the two pieces of your door back together. And it looks like the letterbox was never there, no one would ever know. So there we go. Okay, so I'm just counting my squares here. I only want this to be eight centimeters high. I am just going to slice a tiny bit off here. The top of the arch isn't really at a 90 degree angle. It sort of angles out. So I've just cut off that little angle there. And now I've got it perfectly at eight centimeters with the door and the arch. And I need to cut my columns to match. So I'm just lining them up here with the arch so I can get the right height. And I'm just gonna cut as straight as I can with my knife. And then I should be able to push these back here. There we go. And I should have a cute little door with columns and an arch, which fits inside my mold. So let me just test it here. Here's the arch. The arch is a, a little bit snug. I haven't cut off enough on the sides. So I'm just gonna trim them one more time. Like I said, just uh, make sure that you trim the same amount off each side so that it stays symmetrical. So there we go, it's one side and the other side. And I'll just check that again. There we go, that's fitting much better now. And then I can also put in my columns. There we go, one each side and my door. And let's see, just give them a little squeeze in there. Let's see how that's sitting. Doesn't look too bad, I think. Pretty happy with that. All right, let me show you. There you go. 
we have a beautiful little front door but this one fits inside my mold and uh, you wouldn't even know that all these bits here were attached <laughs> all right so now I'm going to take these little bits that were left over and remelt them down with some more soap so that I can make another door embed and I'll need to do this another two times so that I have three doors all up uh, so again I'm going to do this next one when it's set I'll trim it down and then use the trimmings to do a third one trim that up as well and um, I mean if you wanted to do a lot of these obviously it would be worth investing in more than one door mold you would you need several and you could uh, pop them out quite quickly because they don't take long to cut up either so but I've only got one because like I said I'm just sort of testing this concept and I just wanted to see what I could do um, but I think it's working pretty well so far Okay, so here we are, it's a couple of hours later and I have three beautiful doors all ready to go. Now, I want to stick these down on top of the base bars uh, and I'm gonna use some more soap base to do that. So I'm just um, removing these here and just sort of propping them up in a way that's easier to get to them. That one in the middle I actually cut a little bit differently. It's got some, some bottom sort of bottom of the columns there uh, it's, it's slightly different but I was just sort of testing a theory I was playing around but um, I think I'm happy with how I showed you guys to do it the first way uh, I've got the columns and the doors stuck to each other there so I thought oh I'll keep those together because that'll make it easier to uh, to put in uh, so I'm melting a little bit of soap about 10 grams for each soap bar is what I'm sort of guesstimating that I'll need like I said I haven't actually done this before these are my prototypes, my prototype soap bars that I'm making. Uh, so yeah, I've got about 30 grams all up here and I've got my isopropyl alcohol on hand. I'm spraying a little bit of soap into the mold and then I'm putting the embeds on top. Now that one there, I poured a little bit too much soap in initially and it actually oozed up in between uh, my embeds. So the second time I did it, I used a lot less soap and I'm just very carefully um, putting the embeds down on a tiny bit of soap and then pouring soap around the embeds uh, in the top corners and also down beside each of the columns to sort of cement these embeds in place. So here you go. Here you can see me pouring that soap in there and then down each by each column. There we go, making sure there's no bubbles. Starting to solidify there, so I'm just giving it a bit of help. Uh, spraying with lots of alcohol as I go. Okay, while those are setting, I'm going to paint up some of these embeds. So I've selected the ones I want to use. I'm having to just give a good trim to some of them because like I said, I should have trimmed them when they were still in the mold, but I didn't. And so what you're seeing me do here, you could actually save time by just doing that in the mold. Uh, so I have my dark green uh, trees and this wreath and I'm just going to cover it. I'm just using dry mica at the moment. Um, if I was doing this properly and really going for it, I'd probably use uh, make up a mica paint um, and be a bit more neater and a bit more sort of with, a, with more attention to detail. Uh, because these are prototypes, I'm just sort of slapping this on and just seeing how it goes. So I've got a red bow here. Oh, the bow I cut from my candy cane, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, but I thought the bow was too cute, and so I cut it out of the candy cane. Here we go. I've got my gift. I've got my bells, all in a beautiful red colour. Um, and then I'm also going to just paint the bow that's on my wreath here. I, I did the baubles gold, um, and then I decided to do the bow red. Here is one of the little candy canes. I'm just going to... Do that all red there. There we go. And um, my snowman. So the snowman, I find if you've got like a dark blue or even a, a grey sort of mica that you can just dust on and then rub off, except for leaving it in the creases, you can kind of uh, get a little bit more detail on your snowman there. I'm giving him a green scarf. 
and I'm also going to do some green highlights and a couple of other things. Uh, I'm just using a lip gloss brush there to brush off some of the red mica on that candy cane so I get the striped effect. And then I'm also painting some gold here on my bow, on my bell, and on my Christmas gift. So there we go. I think these are looking fine uh, for a prototype. Like I said, if I was, um, you know, making some proper bars that I wanted to sell or to gift, I'd probably be using uh, a mica paint, which would just be a little bit more brighter than the colors would be brighter and more intense than what I've got here. Okay, my bars are dry now. I just want to see, I'm going to actually take them out of the mold because I just want to see how they worked in terms of pouring the soap base around them and getting those embeds to stay in place or gluing those embeds to the base bars basically. And I, you know, I think uh, it was pretty successful. Uh, I think they're looking pretty good. Um, so like a blank canvas, really, we're going to have to uh, pretty them up. But um, yeah, I think they came out quite well. This is a little bit of sort of fray around the edges, uh, but you can cut that off. All right, I'm jumping ahead here because I went ahead and sort of painted my soaps and I didn't record it because I just got too distracted and, and went ahead. But what I did is I brushed over a little bit of brown and then I used some gold mica for the highlights. So I brushed the brown on and then brushed the brown off just so that it would sit in all the creases and uh, give the shape of the mold a little bit more definition so you could see um, the shape of the columns and the arches and the detail on the doors and stuff like that. And then I used the gold just for some highlights. Again, you could paint these up really beautifully. I mean, I know some of you are absolutely amazing with mica and a paintbrush and you could really go to town on these, which, you know, I would because they look fantastic. But just for today, because I'm in a rush and I'm just doing this fast, I'm just experimenting, seeing what happens. I've just decided to go for that was a sort of, I guess it's a shabby chic sort of look. Uh, you know, these doors now don't look like they're been kept in the best condition, um, but they've still got, you know, a little bit of elegance to them. I'm now positioning my embeds where I'd like them to go. I've got a beautiful wreath, some bells and a bow adorning the door. So this is one of my little Christmas trees. And what I've actually done is I've cut it in half. So I've cut it in half to make two Christmas trees. And then I'm going to sort of slide each half into sort of like the crease here between the door and the column. Now, the reason I did that is because it gives you a really long, uh, narrow tree, which is quite elegant, but also the ones that I had sort of stuck up too far and I was worried that I wouldn't cover them all with the clear soap when I was finished. Uh, so I think this is a sort of a good solution to just have uh, half a tree. You can't really tell if you, if you put them in like that, that the tree's even been cut in halves because I sort of put them in uh, with their corners sort of nestled in between the door and the column and they just look like proper trees. Uh, so there we go. I had a little gift left over. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it, but I think I'm happy with them as they are. I've got a wreath and some trees. I've got a bell and a snowman and then a bow, a Christmas gift and a candy cane. So some beautifully decorated front doors there. All right, now it's time to seal it all in with a layer of clear. So this is an ultra clear soap base. Um, normally I'd pour it onto a spoon, but I thought I'd try if I just pour it into the corners and then it flow gently over the rest of the soap bar um, that there wouldn't be sort of any smudging of the mica for some reason this I don't know what's going on with this pouring spout but it's running down the uh, the edge of the cup rather than pouring out which is not working very well for me at all I don't know what's going on there um, so now I'm just sort of pouring it all the way up to the very top rim of the soap and um, giving it a spray with alcohol 
And you wouldn't believe it, but it was at this point uh, that my device ran out of memory and stopped recording. So I didn't get to, um, I, I can't show you pouring the remainder of the two, remaining two bars, but here they are here. These are set now and I'm popping them out. So let's have a look at them. Um, okay, so I really should have gotten a spoon and poured onto a spoon because what's happened here is because the soap flowed so slowly down over the embeds, yes, it didn't smudge them, which is great, but it left these enormous bubbles around some of the embeds, uh, which just looks very untidy um, and, and basically makes the embeds look a little misshapen. The worst is this bow here, this bow here in the center. Look how it, it's not clear. Uh, that's because it's got sort of bubbles all around it. it. I didn't get the soap wrapped around it very well. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've just got a soap edger and I'm just edging each of the soap bars. Uh, just um, makes them look a little bit neater, a little bit more elegant. So there's my snowman and my bows. I've had the same problem here. I don't know if you can see it around the trees. There's definitely some bubbles all around the trees. It's They're not even bubbles. It's more like pockets, air pockets, because uh, they're not like round like bubbles, but there's just like these oddly shaped gaps where the clear soap base hasn't filled. And um, yeah, see there, you can, it's, it sort of glistens like silver, but that's what it is there. Okay, so here are my prototypes. What do you think? You have to let me know in the comments. Is it a yay or a nay? You know, they can be done up much prettier with some some better painting and uh, some, some better design. Maybe a red door would look fantastic. Uh, but I want to know what you think. Would you make them next year for your Christmas soaps? Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, who's watched, liked and subscribed to the Dancing Soap Dish this year. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And thank you so much. See you next time, guys. Enjoy.